Okay, well, guess what? Um, we're going to continue working on the RPG project. We're doing object-oriented programming. We're doing derived objects, base objects, but we have a problem. Okay, we're at a crisis. Okay, um, the next step I was going to go over is once we've successfully created our character, is to save the character information in an XML file. But as I started searching and looking it up, I realized there's no simple way to basically have an XML file that has, for example, a lumberjack and a mage. No easy way of dealing with it. So we've come to a point where we need to do what's called refactoring. And those of you who have been following along are probably going to be annoyed, maybe a little miffed, possibly perturbed. Okay, And here's why, because now I've led you down one path and now we have to like go back some steps and go in a new direction. Okay, And this is part of software design anyway. It's part of coding, it's part of engineering. You get to a point, now part of this is a problem because we didn't design it very well to begin with. If I had a better design to begin with, I might not have had this problem happen. Okay, <laughs> But part of it is just by experience. Okay, There's some things you can do, some things you can't. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a major revision of our code. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at the entity. And we're going to use that. It's going to continue to be a base class. However, what we're going to do is rather than have different character types like lumberjack and mage and warrior and rogue and things like that, we're going to have um, one, one class that's going to be for the player who plays the game and another class for the non-playing character. And each of those will know whether it's a lumberjack or a mage or a rogue or whatever. And we're going to try to make it in such a way that we can expand it to new classes without having to do a lot of extra work. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the entity and we're going to make a couple of changes. Number one, we're going to add a new enumerator. Okay? This new enumerator is going to cover the character classes, so the different kinds of characters we can have. Now, of course, you might be following along and doing something slightly different, okay? And that's fine if you want to do it. Let me just encourage you to have a class for the character that allows that character to choose different races, or it could be occupations. You could be like a pirate, or you could be um, a, a captain, or you know whatever you're doing here. Um, but in this case, we're going to call it character classes. And um, actually, we're going to call it entity class. Okay, like we did entity gender. Then our property is going to use an entity class, but we're going to call it character class. And I just learned the other day how you, you sometimes have to be careful how you do it. And I found that naming an entity class is consistent with what we did with gender. So it's another enumerator. Notice it's outside of our class entity. It's in the namespace for RPG classes. We put it here. And because we made it public, all our other classes will have access to these. Okay. So now we have to go through our list of the different types of characters. In order to do that, I'm going to go back to my form creator. And I'm going to get all of those from here. I'm going to click cancel. I'm going to go back to my entity, wherever it may be. And I'm going to paste in here. And we're just going to separate them all out with commas. So you may have different character types. And that is fine. And again, I have to keep the lumberjack just to go with the shtick. But, you know, come up with the others. And we're going to go ahead and do an unknown. Because we may have an unknown creature. Plus, this will allow us to signify whether we have actually... Um, set a class for an object or not. So we create an enumerator called entity class and then we're going to follow up and look I have this nice little spot here ready for me. I'm going to make it protected and remember protected allows other derived classes access to it. So it's now entity class. I'm going to put underscore class. Okay. So there's our field. Now we have a, pri a protected field entity class. And then we're going to do create a property just like we did for the entity gender. So public entity class. And then we're going to call this, I think we're going to call it character class. Uh, it's, it's a good idea not to give the word class since that carries such heavy um, programming um, 
concepts with it, right? Because we have public abstract class. It's a keyword. Why create a class that's, you know, that's just going to confuse everything. So we're going to go ahead and fill it out as character class. And then we're going to do it get and protected set. Of course, maybe I should have called it um, entity class as well or character class. It's probably not a bad idea. I'm going to refactor that now before I go too much deeper on here. Sorry. I'm going to go up here, change that to character class. Following the format we did with the modifiers, right? So we start with the lower case. I think that's Pascal case. I could be wrong. And we'll put here character, oops, class. It does like that. Protected, set, and it's character class equals value. So now we have a property. We've exposed that. So uh, we can make use of that. We can read it. And if we need to set it in another class, we can do that because it's protected set. Save our changes. Um, and then let's go back down to our constructor. In our constructor, we set all of our property values here. I'm going to go ahead and set gender and um, character class here. But notice how each of these start as just empty, like no value here, zero here. So the equivalent of that under entity gender is unknown. Okay, so we start with the parameterless constructor. We give it an unknown value, which is the same as on name, giving it no value there. And then, of course, it's character class equals entity class dot unknown. And with uh, code completion, with the little IntelliSense, look how fast that was. Just crank that sucker out there. All right, let's pause for a moment. Okay, so at this point, we've added the ability for an entity to, to know what kind of entity it is, what classification it belongs to. Okay, and this is going to make things much simpler for our players in the game to be of different classes. Okay, this will create interesting issues for when we give it values and things like that, but for now, uh, we're just going to keep it like this, and we're going to create two new derived classes based off of entity. One is going to be for the player, and one's going to be for non-playing characters. Okay, so we're going to have one class called NPC, one class called player, and we're going to add that right now. And they're going to be based off of entity. So you right-click on classes, choose add class. Okay, would you do that now? And then on the class, one will be called NPC. Okay, the non-playing character. Click add. And then we're going to add another class, and we can do this at any time, and this will be the player class, player.cs. All right, so we'll take a look at these. These are derived objects. They are based off of entity, okay? That's the first thing you want to do, and we'll just do this for player, and we'll do it for the rest. Okay, step one in our class, let's add a random number generator. Okay, there's our random number generator. Let's add our constructor. And at this point, it's parameterless, um, and we're going to leave it parameterless. Now we'll, now that we have our parameterless constructor, let's create another one. Whoa, without all caps on. Now, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to pass it. We're going to receive a name so we can accept a name. And then we're going to get a gender. And remember, it's entity gender. And we called it, or we'll call it eGender. And we're going to get one more, and that's entity class because we would like to find out what classification it comes from. We'll call it E-class, like so. Okay, we call the base, so that we call the base constructor, gives us some of the values, and now we're gonna override it. 
Okay, and remember we call that polymorphism where we have a constructor, but we're doing it differently Name equals name uh, gender Equals e gender Yes, sir Okay That's not a good idea or a good thing. We have a student who can't see my show so uh, oops e class Okay, one moment, please. So you see how the end, the player now um, is shaping up. And this looks a lot like what we've been doing so far. And then we're going to do one last constructor where we're going to give it all the different values that we could possibly give it. And that's going to be for if you have a game where the user can provide the values. So entity gender, e gender. Int wisdom and then <coughs> now this one will be a longer constructor right because we're gonna have to do this for everything we did before so I'm just gonna copy this I'm gonna paste it here and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the dexterity all that there we go so of course this uh, this, of course, constructor allows the user to divvy up points and pass it to the character right there. Okay. One of the other things, too, is I've kind of been thinking about this. This actually could use the constructor. And there's no reason why we can't because uh, the property is a protected set, um, which means that we're still part of a derived class. We can do that. So I'm going to go in and, and fix that uh, real quickly here. Um, And I, honestly, I'm not sure if there's one reason why I should do it this way or another. I've seen code do it both ways. Uh, that's the way I had it up here, so for consistency's sake. So the only difference is now these, dexterity, health, strength, and wisdom, those are being set as properties, not. And then when you change the property, you're just changing the field itself anyway. So it has the same end result, okay? So that's what your player should look like. Your NPC should probably look very similar. The only thing is I don't think there's a need to give points to the non-player character unless you create a class that does that. So one of the things I'm thinking of is maybe copying this code like this, for example, and using it. But watch how I do this. I'm just going to be a little bit lazy here. I go to my non-playing character. I'm going to zoom in. Ah, that was highlighted. Didn't mean to. And then, um, do I need a random generator? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Random rand equals new. Hey, if I don't use it, I can take it out later. Oops, not entity. And there we go. See how fast that was? Because I copied from the other code. Uh, and that's what my entity looks like. And I'm leaving out the last um, constructor overload.